Today I'm joined by journalist Alex O'Meara. Alex has recently finished an in-depth investigation into medical clinical trials. His new book, Chasing Medical Miracles, The Promise and Perils of Clinical Trials, is due out in June of 2009. Alex, while reading your book, I found it fascinating that so many people around the world in the, in the United States are affected by clinical trials. How many people are affected? There are 20 million people in the United States enrolled in clinical trials. There are 50 million worldwide. It's a $24 billion a year business. What's amazing about those numbers is not just the size, but that's grown 300% in the last decade. So clinical trials, not only for the people enrolled, uh, affect just about everyone in the country and untold millions of people around the world. As an expert on clinical trials, why do you think so many people are participating in them? They're, they're enrolling to get treatment, but uh, clinical trials are not treatment. They are experimentation. They're to get, gather data, and that's it. Some people do get helped, but that's a mistake. That's by uh, chance. That's not the point. The point is to, uh, to do research. Is that why you enrolled in clinical trials? Because you thought it would be a treatment for your diabetes? I did. Uh, I had type 1 diabetes for 30 years, and I wanted to be cured. So I enrolled in a transplant program where I got two transplants that took cells from cadaver pancreases and put them into my liver where the cells then made insulin for me, and it worked. Um, I have to be on immunosuppression medicine for the rest of my life. I've uh, heard some people tell me that it's an extreme way to go about getting a cure, and uh, I, I think clinical trials are like the extreme sports of, of, uh, of medicine. You know, they're, they're not simple. And to get a cure was everything, you know. Now, other people do it for the same reasons. And since I have gone through that process, uh, I've evolved a little bit and realized that uh, I actually did help other people and not just myself. So I, I did grow up in that process, but yes. Is the book a biography of your experience? Not my, I'm in it a little bit, but the, it's, it's an objective look. I've been a reporter for a long time, a journalist, uh, and this is an objective uh, look at the ethics, the business, the law, um, the history, and other aspects of clinical trials, other people's personal stories, which are dramatic and enlightening and wrenching, some of them. So, no, it's not about me. Um, it's about, really, the topic and the people uh, who help shape it. Who is Chasing Medical Miracles for? It's not just for people that are involved in the clinical trials. No, it, I mean, it is for them but it, and their families and, and people who might think about becoming enrolled. You know, it's for people in the medical profession, doctors and students and anyone in the industry. Uh, but mostly it's for, for anybody. It's for, you know, the, the person who reads the insert that comes with the, uh, with the aspirin bottle and they want to know what they're reading. And, or they hear a news story about a study that did something and they want to know what that means. They want to know what it means so they can make informed decisions about their own health care. But, uh, and, and they also want interesting stories. I mean, the stuff in it is fascinating. I, I, you know, I traveled to Africa to do research, and that was interesting. Um, traveled all over the country, talked to really, really wonderful, uh, uh, fascinating people. And so all those stories are in there, and, and that's a big part of, of the book also. Now, what about people who become paid subjects in clinical trials? I know it's covered in the book, but tell me a little bit more, but it must be a very weird way to make money. It is kind of a weird way. It's uh, people who do this, uh, they call themselves guinea pigs, and they call what they do guinea pigging. So uh, I did it myself. I went and enrolled in a paid clinical trial, 800 bucks to test an epilepsy medicine. When I did it, uh, they screen you so that you don't have any caffeine or nicotine or anything in your system that might compromise the study. I was loaded up with all the stuff for my transplant, a lot of medication, and also I had a toothache at the time. So I had, uh, I was on antibiotics and Vicodin and Percocet, and, and, and you know I was on more drugs than Elvis at the time. And they screened me, and I passed. They actually passed me through. So I, you know, people get involved in this, and they they want subjects because subjects mean money to some companies and research to others. So. There's a demand definitely for it, and people make 20 to 30 grand a year. I've known people that do that, but at the same time, most of the people doing this are um, they're they're poor, a lot of them, and and uh, you know those numbers are going to increase when people more and more people lose their jobs, they lose their health insurance, and are looking for ways to get treatment, and that becomes an option, but a very 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 risky one. Where can people get more information about your book? Well, like everyone else, I have a website, alexomera.com, and there's a ton of information there. 
They can also uh, go to FDA.gov. There's information there. There's information about clinical trials in general. Uh, just do a Google search for clinical trials in quotes. But most of all, um, beside the book on the topic, uh, talk to your doctor. Talk to any person involved in the medical field. Ask questions. Always ask questions. Whether you're just curious or uh, whether you're going to enroll or thinking about enrolling, the best thing to do is speak up, ask, and, and uh, convince yourself of, of, and learn what you need to know.